whether you're 16 or 65, we all need to make almost 300 grams of new protein per day. Every protein in the body is doing what we call turnover. And different proteins have different lifespans. Uh, there are proteins in the liver that are replaced every hour. There are proteins in the muscle that are replaced every month and a half. And there's connective tissue like in your knee joints and whatever that are replaced every six months or so. The, the striking thing people need to come to grips with is that about four times every year, you've replaced the equivalent of every protein in your body. So that's kind of interesting to keep in mind. Uh, if you're looking at maximum rate of growth, how much protein can you do with resistance exercise and lay down per day? That number is about five grams. And so you need to make 30 and only 15 and only five of it could actually be net gain. Okay, so that's turnover. If you look at the whole body, then about of that 300, about 25% is muscle. Muscle makes up 50% of your body protein, but only gets 25% of your turnover, okay? Where the liver and the gut and the kidney have these get 75%. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the night, your liver has to be making protein or you die. Mm -hmm. Where your muscle becomes a reservoir of amino acid. It's kind of sitting there and it's not being used while you're sleeping. And so it actually donates the amino acids that the liver's using in the middle of the night. So you've got this balance thing going on where protein in the liver is constantly being made, where protein in the muscle is only getting made associated with meals. And so there's this constant going back and forth that you referred to between synthesis and breakdown. What's the net balance? Uh, during fasting period, muscle is in a net negative. And during feeding periods, it's in a net positive. Liver's not doing that. What is synthesis? Synthesis is that process of making those new proteins, whether they're enzymes or structural, whatever, those new proteins you make every day. And in the muscle, particularly as we get older, is very much meal driven. Uh, in whey protein, leucine's about 12%. And in soy protein, it's a little less than 8%. So you can get to 2.5 grams with 23 grams of whey protein or 22, and it takes 32 with soy. Um, both will have the same effect if you give everybody 35 grams. <laughs> but if you only give 20 grams, whey will have an effect and soy won't. If you're having a mixed meal with 45 grams of protein in it, and it's a, a combination of of, of foods, um, it's not a problem. If you're, mm -hmm. if you're eating 120 grams of protein per day, it, the combination probably doesn't make much difference. If you're eating 50 grams, it probably does. If, yeah. So if I was having a healthy 55 year old, who's pretty physically active, you know, doing some resistance, doing some aerobic training, I usually target the range of 1.2 to 1.6 and they can kind of fall in there wherever they want. Both in the young studies or in the elderly studies, they seem to translate pretty well. So I think, I think you know, the lean body mass is sort of, ultimately you'd like to have the protein relative to lean body mass, but we typically don't know that. So it's per body composition. Um, women typically at the same weight would have a little less lean mass. So potentially they can have a little lower. So let's think about a 50-year-old who's stable body weight. So they're not gaining or losing weight and they eat 100 grams of protein per day. What happens to that? Right. You have to burn the exact equivalent per day mm -hmm. of what you take in. So whether you take in 90 or whether you take in 160, you're still going to burn it all. The issue is you need a constant supply of the essential amino acids to keep that cycle running. You need a constant supply of the protein to keep it running. The 30 grams, the 30 grams doesn't even max protein synthesis in muscle. Uh, there was a paper by Doug Patton Jones at one point where he sort of 
argued that 30 was the optimum, but there's been a number of other people that have shown that when you look at protein synthesis in muscle, um, 30, again, depending on the quality of protein, it could be 25, but something around 30 triggers it, but it probably still goes up. It's a, it's a flattening curve. You don't get as big a response with additional protein, but it probably doesn't plateau until 50 or 55 or 60 grams. So I personally recommend people have 40 grams of protein at, at breakfast and get 55 at dinner. Mm-hmm. And in lunch can be 20 or whatever you want. Um, mm-hmm. So I distribute it unevenly with one fairly large meal that's kind of maxing the system and another meal that's just kind of early triggering it. When you eat a protein, if you eat a meal that's got 30 or 60 grams of protein in it, when it comes in, almost 50% of that pr- protein, those amino acids are oxidized in the liver and the gut before it ever gets to the blood. It's called first pass elimination. It's always happening. So the idea that you'll hear some trainers say, well, you can't absorb more than 30. Well, that's nonsense. You'll absorb whatever you eat. It can be 100 grams. Um, you can't utilize it. Well, the efficiency probably goes down as you go higher. Um, so, you know, 30 grams might be, you know, a cost benefit. You might get the maximum effect for the fewest calories. So if your issue is obesity, that may be an issue. But if your issue is I want to gain muscle mass, then 50 might, 55 might be a better target for you. The range of activity after a meal is probably 25 to 60. That, in that range, you probably get a benefit.